Notion charts are finally here. I spent the last 48 hours exploring this new feature, trying to find out exactly how we can make use of this in our Notion workspaces and whether or not it has lived up to this long awaited hype. In this video, I'll be sharing some practical ways that you can start implementing charts into your existing workspaces, as well as sharing a couple of tips and hacks that I've discovered while playing around with this new charts feature. Let's take a look. So I was thinking about the best way to cover as many charts features as possible in one video. And the use case that I set it on is financials. I think that whether you're using Notion for business, work, or even personal financials, this is going to be a really good use case and it's gonna cover a lot of the different visualizations and data types that we're going to be working with in the various charts layout. So what we'll do is we'll create several charts based on some revenue and expenses data. And I'll be walking you step-by-step step through how to create each of these visualizations. But let's just back up. Notion has just released a new feature called Charts. To create a chart, it's just like creating any other database view, slash, you can start now typing chart and you'll see four different options for the different common layouts of charts. If you create a chart, it's gonna prompt you to choose a database source, or you can just use a blank chart, which is actually going to create its own database, which is the first important thing to understand about charts. Charts have two parts, which is kind of clearly shown in the way that Notion presents a new blank chart. You have the visualization and you have the data. Now, if you're already familiar with Notion databases, you'll know that Notion lets you take the same data in a database, such as this expenses database, and it lets you create several different views for how you wanna visualize that data. So I could create another view that's not a chart of my expenses in any of these layouts. So you might be familiar with the Kanban board, timeline, calendar, list, gallery, and you'll see that chart is just another view, it's another visualization of a database, which is just to say that you can't have a chart without having a database. Always think about where the data is coming from for this chart. Typically, it'll be in another tab next to the chart here. So as I mentioned, the first piece of any chart is going to be the database itself, and we're gonna be working with this expenses database here. In the database, I have a list of expense items. The name is just written here. I have the value or how much the expense was for, the due date of the expense, a category tag, which I can select from this drop down menu, a status for the payment, whether it's been paid or not. And then I have this little formula which tells me whether it is overdue, paid or upcoming. So the second part of any chart is going to be the visualization. We have this database with a bunch of values and due dates, categories and information that we would like to visualize. And we can use any of these properties as axes in our chart. If we just quickly look above at this revenue chart, we can see that along the x-axis, we are working with time. We're working with the months, January, February, March uh, of this year. And then on the y-axis here, we have the values. A common thing you probably would like to know is how much are you spending per month? So to do so, we can create a new chart, link to a database, I'm going to be using the expenses database again. And let's just start with a bar chart that's going to calculate all of the expenses month by month. So the first thing Notion is going to ask us is what do we want to show along the X axis? And like the chart above, we actually want to break this down into months. So since we have a due date property, Notion actually gives us some options for how we want to break down this X axis value. So it's gonna let us do it day by day. So if I were to click day, it's gonna give me an item along the x-axis for every single day item in this expenses database. So you'll see that there are a lot of individual dates. And so when we go to the chart, you'll see there are a lot of values going along this x-axis. But right now it's just giving me a count of how many items are in that date. And this is because the y-axis is showing count. So for some things like tasks or people or contacts, maybe count is gonna be a useful thing to be using. But in this case, we already have this value column, which is what we're most interested in for our expenses. And again, Notion is gonna give us a few 
useful options that are linked to the number property. So because the value is a number property in the database, it's going to give us these options to sum, average, min, max, and so on. In our case, we actually want the sum of all the values that land on any given day. So I'm going to click sum and you'll see that the chart now totals up all of the expenses that fall on each individual day. And it gives us this kind of scattered colorful plot. This could be handy for seeing any outliers in your day by day breakdown. But if we want to get that month by month expenses breakdown, then what we'll need to do is we'll need to change one small thing. Instead of showing the due day, we're going to break this down by month. So Notion's going to automatically categorize an item in the database, an expense item, based on whether or not it falls in a given month. So it's just, this is a really handy inbuilt feature that Notion has done, which is going to save us time with creating our own filters. It's automatically going to tally up all of the items in a month. And again, I don't want to show the count. I want to show the value and I want to show the sum of the values. So here we go. We have our month by month expenses breakdown, which is pulling information from this database here. So a simple bar chart like this, where you have one value along the X axis and what it is that you're measuring on the Y axis. That's probably the most common visualization that you'll want to be using. And it doesn't have to be for dates. So for a bar chart, you could also use categories. So since our expenses database has a category tag, instead of the due date, we could work with categories. So I click category. Again, it's going to, by default, it's going to show me the count of items. I don't want the count for the Y axis. I want the value and the sum. And this, instead of the month by month, is going to give me a category breakdown of expenses. You can also do this horizontally instead of vertically, and not much is going to change at all. For something like categories, though, I would actually recommend using a donut chart. And you'll notice that instead of X axis and Y axis, Notion presents it as what to show. So that's the chunks that are going to appear in your chart. And each slice represents, again, here we're going to be doing the value and the sum of the values. So what about this line chart? Well, I can use a line chart for my categories, but as a general rule of thumb, line charts are typically best for things like time series, which is what we're doing with our month by month graph and also cumulative. So if we wanted to add up all of the expenses across time as the year goes on, we could also use a line chart for this cumulative graph. So let's just switch this line chart to show the month by month data. Again, X axis, we're going to be due month. Instead of count, we want to show the value sum. And since we mentioned it already, we could do a cumulative value, which is going to be showing a buildup of expenses throughout the year. So those are our simplest graphs that we can create where we're using two properties. We have one along an X axis, one along the Y axis, and we're just getting Notion to present that into a nice chart visualization for us. I'm really excited to see that they've included this group by option though, which lets us basically introduce a third variable into our charts. So let's switch this back to a bar chart. We're going to be calculating our expenses month by month here, just like before. But we're also now going to introduce the categories into this bar chart. So what I can do is I can click group by and I can select another property that I would like to introduce into this chart. In this case, we're going to be breaking down each individual bar into its respective categories. So when I click category, you'll see that this small legend has now appeared, which is giving me each individual category and where it appears in my chart month by month. As I hover over each individual category, lights up the graph, which is just a really nice touch from Notion's design team. So you can see that with just a few clicks, I can transform this large table of data about my expenses. And now Notion can present me with this really neat breakdown of month by month expenses, as well as the categories that were filling up those expenses each month. Just like any other database view, Notion still lets you filter out data that you don't want to include or only filter for specific data. The way that you can do that is by clicking into the chart options, selecting filter, 
And again, we can just choose the property that we would like to filter for. So for example, we could omit a specific category from our chart if we didn't want to include the, let's say, the living and leisure expenses. We can do category is not and then the selected items will be discluded from the list. So if you wanted to maybe just see business expenses, then you could create a chart that is filtering out any personal expenses like this. But Notion lets you create advanced filters like on any other database. So you can add a filter, click add advanced filter, and you could create a rule, which was something like, I want you to show me the chart of all my expenses where the value is greater than $100. And now when we hover over this chart, we can see that the chart is only showing us the big payments that were made in each given month. We could quickly, we could flip that rule to show us only the smaller payments and the chart will update accordingly. So with a combination of filters, layouts, groupings, and various properties in your database, Notion Charts has done a really good job of letting you work with your data in a way that's really intuitive and also just is really nice and pleasant to look at and work with. One more small nice little touch. You can actually export this chart once you've got it the way that you would like it to look by clicking save chart as and then Notion gives you this little preview of how you would like your chart to look. You can download or copy it as an image and then if we want to get a little preview of what that looks like we could paste it here. And this is a nice image that you could share maybe with your team or if you wanted to share some milestone on social media. I'm sure that's exactly what Notion has in mind trying to get people to share images of their charts. So if we just step back a bit from the charts features themselves, the exciting thing about this isn't that you it wasn't possible to create charts before. There are all sorts of tools, uh, even Excel and Google Sheets lets you create charts quite easily. The advantage is now we can do it natively inside of Notion, which gives us all of that flexibility for placing charts where we want them working with existing databases and getting the views for how we want to build our own workspace. So one example of that is building your own dashboards, which you can populate with as many charts and views as you like. So an example of that in this business OS template is if you wanted to track various KPIs across your business, you can now create dashboards like this where you have several charts populating the screen with the exact filters that you want, the exact data that you want to be showing in ways that you might have had to pull together and stitch from various other sources like Google Analytics and Stripe, PayPal, Shopify. You can now create those dashboards directly in Notion yourself. So while I've been trying to do this for this business OS template, I discovered one useful little hack which might save you some time. When you create a new chart from scratch in Notion, if I just create a chart, as we saw before, the default chart that gets created, even if you use an existing database, it still requires a bit of formatting and setting up. So even the data itself doesn't actually have a very useful beginning structure. It just has this status and name properties. So if you go into the chart, it's not really showing much, anything much interesting and you have to set this up each time from scratch. Most charts, at least for what I'm trying to measure in the business, are going to be time series. So we're gonna have a list of months and we're gonna have a key metric that we are tracking over time. And so I just set up this little button automation which is going to automatically produce a new chart database, which is going to have, you know, just 12 months of dummy data, values, the period set, and a link to a goal or target. So just to show you how that works, now if I want to add another KPI to my dashboard, I just hit new KPI. I'm gonna drag it into this spot here. I might create another one just to even it out. And now all I need to do is populate the chart with a given metric. So when I go into data, it has the new KPI. Let's just say that this is, I don't know, orders. And then we can populate it month by month. And then when I head over to my chart, 
All I need to do is rename this as the name of the KPI that I'm tracking here. And I have a new metric in my dashboard, which to be honest, would have taken a long time before this new charts feature was introduced. So that's one little tip hack for people who are just getting started with creating charts. Another one, instead of again, starting from scratch, you can just duplicate a view And then you can add any filters or other layouts that you would like to include. And it'll already be pulling the correct data that you want without having to set all of that up again from scratch. And one last tip that I found while playing around with charts is just the styling options. I also find that having the data labels on the bar chart can sometimes get in the way and get a bit crowded. So if I were to add this one here, I think it just gets a bit messy and especially when you hover over, you have the same information doubling up. So you may wish to just set that to be off. By default, I think it's on, which is why I wanted to share this small tip. You can also adjust the size of the charts, which for the moment is just the height. Uh, if you do have these side by side views, maybe a small or medium is going to be a better fit for you. And I also removed the axis names because I think, again, that kind of gets in the way and the chart looks fine without a label. So just to recap, there are two parts to any chart. There's the data itself and the visualization that you'd like to build. You can use any existing database in Notion that you're already working with, or you can create a new chart and create a new database with it and then fill out that data from scratch. Once you have your data source set, then it's all about choosing the visualization that you'd like to create. Best way to do that is just to create a new view, select chart, link to your database, choose the visualization that you'd like to create. Then you need an X axis. So you need to choose what it is that you want to be tracking along the X axis. Often this is going to be best for time or categories or groups. Then you need to decide what do you want to be measuring on the Y axis. This is good for things like values or counts. Once you've got the hang of that, you can try grouping your charts by a third variable. Often something like a category can be useful. And finally, we touched on some of the styling options, which might help you just simplify or make some more space around your chart in Notion. And that's it. Obviously, it's still a very new feature. If you have any other ideas or comments to share, I'd be happy to hear them. And otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.